The United States of America is the most successful nation the world has ever known. I think that's largely because we're the freest nation. Humans cannot reach their potential, cannot realize their dreams unless they're free. If prosperity were easy, everybody around the world would be prosperous. If freedom were easy, everybody around the world would be free. If security were easy, everybody around the world would be secure. They are not. None of this is going to be easy. But this is the United States of America. It takes an extraordinary effort. It takes extraordinary commitment. It takes extraordinary strength. The Valley Forge wasn't easy. Going to the moon wasn't easy. Settling the West wasn't easy. We are the American people. We have seen difficulties before and we always overcome them. This is about rolling up our sleeves. We might have some differences, but at Americans putting our head down and getting it done. All right, the force is not with me. I cannot make that those cups come over here. <laughs> Don't know what's wrong with it. It's not gonna work. Um, welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. It is Wednesday, August 30th. We are live here on Red Voice Media Network. Um don't forget, you can go to their website at redvoicemedia.com. You can check out their Rumble channel. Just type in Red, Red Voice Media. Like like always, you can go to rumble.com forward slash Red Voice Media. It's going to take you right to their, their page. I know I got the, I don't know why the C is there. The C is silent. Take it out. I don't need it. Uh, let me introduce the Godfather Conservative Radio, Mr. Hutch Bailey Jr. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's our Wednesday. It's your Wednesday. Glad to be here. And Mr. J.R. Robinson. Hey, 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 folks, thanks for tuning in. And as always, take a second, give a like, give a comment, give a share. Helps us beat the big tech algorithm. We can't do it without you. And if you are on Facebook, and if you are on Rumble, and if you are on um, Cozy, and if you are on Twitter, and if you are on Twitch, and if you are on YouTube, and if you are on Getter, Click subscribe. Click subscribe. Let us know. Let us know that you're listening. Um, add us. Add us to your podcast playlist. Okay. Add us to your pod. We've been we've been doing this for about twelve years. Fort Worth. What's up, Fort Worth? Hey. Giddy uh, up. We've been doing this for about twelve years. So now, I mean, I I think we've probably earned some trust in you adding us to your playlist. And also, I mean, because honestly, for 12 years, we haven't been begging, you know, um, I mean, I, I don't know whether that is um, a disadvantage or whether that's my stupidity or, or what, but um, I always figured, you know, we just come on here, we do what we do and then, then we roll out, you know, I'm, we haven't begged for money. We haven't begged for follows. We haven't begged for, to put, uh, I mean, uh, we have talked about the uh, share, okay, but we really don't do that too much because we get right into whatever we get into, and maybe that's on me, you know. Uh, I, I, I mean, I'm. I tell you right now, I'm the worst salesman that you ever have ever seen. I, I ain't. We're not really no, down. Not really down with the mug club. Yeah. <laughs> 
Although you can still get our coffee cups at WayneDupree.com slash shop. War! <laughs> he, he was like, we, we got to go to war. This is war, y'all. This is war. And then the next day he shows up. Buy a mug club. Get your coffee mug. <laughs> in between in between artillery salvos. Uh, oh, man. A Trump version 2.0. The political establishment is going to be, I mean, well, well, the political is already angry. They don't want him in office. They, they're, they're, they're afraid of him. I would be too. <laughs> I would be too. Because first thing he's going to do, he, he ain't even going to the ball. He's going to um, give himself a pardon first. <laughs> and and you can't do nothing about it. And you know what, too? Um, somebody said there's something that some president did there's some executive order? Gosh, I, can't, I, I wish I could remember that. There was a video that I was watching the other day that, that was talking about an executive order. All President Trump has to do is line through it, and it stops something that all these other presidents have not stopped. There's an executive order. Oh my God! Oh man, I wish I could remember it. But it's tear, it's tearing this. Did did the um did the gold standard thing was that an executive order from Nixon? I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. I know there's several things like that that are executive order. I know John F. Kennedy in an executive order unionized the federal workforce. So that could be undone. Maybe that's with the it. presidential order. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Um, yeah, Trump 2.0 needs to just hire a constitutional scholar to dig through this stuff and show up day one and be like, these executive orders are gone. Congratulations. Well, here, um, I, you know, we, we had President Trump on, <laughs> yeah, President Trump on, on Monday. And um, this young man that we're getting ready to bring up here, uh, I saw him, I, I can't, I can't, it was a video. It was a video of him with President Trump. And usually, usually when stuff like this happens, okay, you know, the person that they're mimic, well, not, I wouldn't say he was mimicking him. That's what Ron DeSantis does. Um, he was impersonating. Uh, in a good way. Impersonating right. Donald Trump. And when I heard him, I was like, God darn it, that don't sound just like Donald Trump. And Donald Trump was like, oh, God darn, that sound like me. Um, when I, I was like, you know what? I got to find out who this young man is. And then uh, when I when I saw who it was, I was like, okay, well, he follows me. So I'm just going to throw it out there. I'm, hey, Sean, can you come on the show? Yeah, sure. So let me um, let me let me bring him on right now. Uh, Sean, hey there, Are you, man. Well, I mean that that's Sean. That that's Sean right now. Okay, yeah. all right, all right. I, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, hope now I can say a friend of the show, this is Sean <laughs> Sean Farish. I want to. You got I'm it, Farish. Yeah, you you pronounce it right. Everyone likes to say Farash. I'm like, oh, whatever. It is what it is. Uh, you know, you'll find <laughs> me, you'll find it one way or the other. It is what it is. Probably the way. Uh, that's probably the way uh, it used to be pronounced uh, as Turkish and Turkish ancestry. So I'm not going to say it's one way or the other, but, uh, but no, it's, uh, I'm happy to be here, Wayne. Expe really excited. Thanks for the invite. Uh, cool intro. really loved it. Um, talking about, Hey, Jesus guy sounds like Trump. It's, it's pretty funny. <laughs> People who see it for the first time, they start going, what is that AI? Not, you know, I get the AI accusation. Is that AI? It's not, it's not AI. It's just me. It's all good. <laughs> and you know what too, you know what too, what was scaring me I, I mean, because I know when I booked you, I was like, okay, now President Trump is going to do his audio. <laughs> so uh, I was like, man, if you hear Sean, and well, and we're going to hear Sean in a few minutes, uh, but if you hear Sean, I was like, man, I hope I hope they think of it like, you know, that, I mean, I hope they know that's President Trump that's right there because <laughs> Sean has him down, down to a science. But Sean, um, how... How did you get into this? My favorite story. I actually told it at that Bedminster event where I was able to do it in front of him, which was ridiculous. It was kind of wild to I actually bet. be able to. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, and everyone says to me in that video, they go, oh, you know, you look so calm. I said, yeah, looked. Um, when I tell you, I almost had a Biden in front of the Pope moment. It was close. You know, it was, uh, I walked off the stage with a knot in my back. I was like, oh man, that was insane. It was so great. I still watch the video and uh, the handshake and tells me that it was good. But the origin story of it is by far one of my favorite stories to tell. It's a story I tell a lot. And um, really it started, I was selling direct TV. Uh, it's a typical sales job. I was at a, a bowling event with other people who were selling at the same, at the same uh, place. And we were, we were bowling and, you know, it was in the 2015, 2016 era. I would say it's probably mid 2016 at that time. I would May, maybe June of 2016. And, uh, someone throws uh, you know, I, I always loved voices. I was always a big, I went to school for radio sports. Radio was my thing. And, you know, Mike and the mad dog, uh, you know, good afternoon, mm -hmm. everybody, the whole thing. So I was always <laughs> into Robin Williams and all that stuff and voice right, actors, right. Mel Blanc, Looney Tunes, did all the voices. Mm -hmm. Long story short is so, uh, Trump has a, a funny voice, right? It's a, a very distinguishable voice. So why not try and just, you know, he's getting popular at the moment with the, politics why not just give it a whirl so we're bowling and uh a guy throws a strike and i just looked at him and i said that was a fantastic throw look at that <laughs> the pins were all over the place like uh an all-you-can-eat buffet after it's seen uh chris christie you know was incredible i got to that point with rosie o'donnell because i didn't make fun of chris christie that much then um and so the guys are like hey that sounded like trump and mm. I, was, I did it right so i did it the rest of the night everyone i wound up working with hated me uh, after that, not everybody, but most of them were like, all right, enough. Um, but I used to use that in the field when I was selling. I would get people who were getting ready to switch to direct TV and they would look at me and, you know, it's that time of year politically charged. And they would say, you know, am I going to be able to get Fox News? It's the only real news. That's back when people trusted Fox. And so uh, I looked, I would look them dead in the eye and I would say, do I look like or sound like the type of person to take that away from you? We're not going to do that. It's going to be great. You're going to have a beautiful package, um, you know. And so I would, I would, I would sell that way, and, and they would buy, and it was a lot of fun. And uh, I'm a weather hobbyist, a weather geek, so I would do these on my Instagram back before anything went viral. You know, uh, mm -hmm. we're going to. I, would, I lived on Long Island, big blizzards that would come. You're going to get enough snow that you could make a snowman that looks like uh, Rosie O'Donnell, big, beautiful snowman, huge. We're talking about round and incredible. <laughs> and just we would just do these things, and I would have people message me and go, you know, I played this and. My aunt or my dad or my grandfather or my daughter or whatever. Like, why is Trump talking about the weather? And I'm like, really? It's fooling people? So the long story short is it, you know, I just kept doing it. I just kept doing it. And it was usually like little weather skits. And, um, you know, it never caught on. Uh, and then a friend of mine told me, and this is like, right, this is like, do I shake hands with the enemy right now? And my rationale is I will operate in enemy territory, Facebook, Instagram, all these other places. If they're going to give me ground, I'm going to use it until they tell me go away. So a friend of mine, after I started this organization on Long Island called the Loud Majority, I now live in Tennessee, but we were throwing the biggest Trump rallies in the country. You saw it all over uh, New York City, you know, thousands of cars down to the Montauk Lighthouse on Long Island. Long story short, he goes, go on TikTok. And I said to him, I can't do that. That's China. We don't do China. I can't do that. He goes, no, if you do that on, if you do that on TikTok, you will go viral quickly. Yeah, and so yeah. I said, oh, well, why not? All right, fine. Let's use that rationale. I'll go operate in enemy territory. I'll use a VPN. We'll go ahead and we'll do this. And so I did the night before Christmas in 2020. Um, and it went, you know, somewhat viral. And then I started the big one is when uh, David Harris Jr. He saw it uh, way back in like the spring of 2021 when, when the left was coming after Dr. Seuss. Remember that they were, they, they said yeah, he was racist. Yeah. And yeah. so I said, no, no, we're going to, we're going to save Dr. Seuss. And so I did green eggs and ham. And so I said, I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Lindsey Graham. I will not <laughs> eat them with the senator from South Carolina or with the virus that came from China. I will not eat them wow. with Mitch McConnell. I will not eat them with that hideous beast, Rosie O'Donnell. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not mm -hmm. like them, Lindsey Graham. And so I did that. I did the cat in the hat. I did uh, some other stuff. And then I started going to drive throughs and ordering, um, you know, people's food. I want a big, beautiful quesadilla. We love quesadillas. <laughs> and we would just, you know, and, and, and it would just, people were, I mean, millions upon millions of views doing something so <laughs> silly. I mean, a Trump GPS, it was the one that put everything on the map. I was sitting, literally, oh. we were waiting to get appetizers at an Applebee's late at night. Me and my friend, I said, hey, I have a feeling, I just want to make a quick video right now. In the bed, of, in the bed, sorry, the shotgun seat of his truck, sitting there, I go, this is a GPS. We get GPS. You're going to make a left. If you reach Bernie Sanders, you've gone too far left. And I did these jokes and they just flew. Wow. And so now we are where we are. Finally get to shake his hand. And he knows 
um, right. that I'm not doing it to be disrespectful. That's the right, number right, one thing. Right, right, right. We're not right. doing what Alec Baldwin did. We're not doing mm -hmm. what some of these other impersonators do. Um, it's not to be disrespectful. As a matter of fact, it is a it is a uh, messaging device that I have found that is really effective because people are laughing their butts off uh, at a joke that I did, you know, maybe a week or so ago about Hurricane Hillary. Hillary has the potential to be very destructive. Just ask Jeffrey Epstein. She'll wipe out everything <laughs> oh in her path. Goodness. Just ask the black. And we could use it as a messaging device. And even I get like liberals in the comments, right? They go, I hate Trump, but that was funny. Mission accomplished because <laughs> now they're listening and now they're watching. And uh, as long as they're not watching some of my other serious shows, they'll continue to listen and watch and have the 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 red pills slowly administered. You know, they call me Captain Deplorable. In that case, we administer the uh, red pills. It's Doctor Deplorable, and it's all good. We'll make it happen. Uh, it's great. So that's the that's the show. That, that's the story. How it started and how it got to where it is. You know, Sean. Thanks for coming on the show. You're one of my favorite kind of guests because you're the kind of <laughs> guest that we just unleash. Right. <laughs> yeah, we don't, wanna, don't have to ask you a whole lot. Just, I, but I do have a request. Good. I'd, I'd like to see you uh, in a meeting with the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and, and, and what uh, what the Commander in Chief's uh, favorability rate is with these guys. Well, some of these people don't like me very much, but we're going to sit them down and we're going to say, I'm going to get on the phone with uh, these two people. We can get on the. Their names are very similar, and some people don't understand the difference. There's. Oh Vladimir Zelensky, yeah. okay, Vladimir Zelensky, who, if you remember, perfect phone call. He actually liked the phone call more than I did, which is incredible. He said it was a beautiful phone call. I've never <laughs> had a better phone call. And then we're going to call Vladimir Putin, who I get along well with. I get along very well. We're going to tell Vladimir, you go back to Russia, 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 <laughs> get out of Ukraine and play with your, they call them in Russian, Matryoshka dolls. They're these big, you see the dolls. <laughs> And they're these big dolls. You start with a Rosie O'Donnell doll, then you open it up, then it's a Stacey Abrams, then you open it up, and it's an Oprah, then you open it up, and it's a smaller, and it gets, and they become tiny. Then you get a tiny doll. It's a Marco Rubio, small doll. <laughs> and we're going to tell them, go play with your dolls and get out of Ukraine. 24 hours, that's what it's going to be. The Joint Chiefs, they're going to look yeah, at me like I'm crazy, yeah. but I'm going to show them that's how we do it, and it's going to work, <laughs> believe me. Oh man, you're not for everyone watching, by the way, unscripted. I had oh, no idea man. that was coming. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> oh. I, I was gonna say, Sean, it's a hoot to have you on the show. And you. uh oh, my God. I, you know, other than knowing how much coffee you drink in a day, like <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I, I did share your Twitter on in the chats and Captain Deplorable 45 link to your website. You've got Thank you. videos, you do your own podcast, but but I just want to drill into a sec. Like you were a normal dude, just <laughs> yeah. working a normal job, going to Applebee's on Monday night for half price appetizers. Yeah. And you did this shtick that took off, but you took that opportunity to actually become a voice in the culture, which we need more of that on the right. And you do a podcast, you talk about current events. Can you kind of give folks like, like you do a bunch of stuff other than just being the Trump impersonator guy. Like, yeah. like what other things do you dig into? Yeah. So uh, it's, it's funny. This is a, another cool like point about me that I like to say, and, and like, I want to preface everything by, by, by telling everyone, like I love and appreciate everybody who thinks it's hilarious. Like by all means, this is not like, Oh, I don't want to just be known as the Trump guy. And I don't want to be known as just the Trump guy, right? That's the thing. There's more right. things important than that. But I always say, let's take all of those likes and shares and comments and views and turn them into real tangible victories. That's what I want to do with it, right? So before I even started going viral with the Trump impersonation, I was, you know, we started on Long Island, this grassroots movement that we were electing school board candidates. And we had these huge, it was the same type of deal. We started it around Trump big Trump rallies. We're talking about 10 to 15,000 vehicles with flags all across Long Island, going into New York City, going to upstate. We actually <laughs> we actually visited Andrew Cuomo's house on his birthday and brought him a cake and he didn't come outside. Could you believe that? Didn't come outside. Like we that. Went, yeah, we went to, uh, we went to Hillary, you know, we were just, you know, we were, Hey, you locked us down. Now we're going to stand out here and you get to see us. Cause we're, we, ident we took a huge sign that said we identify as a group of 10 people or less. Cause that was the rule. But we, there was like, there was like 600 people. Um, and then we went to, <laughs> we actually drove shortly at, at there to uh, Hillary's house. Um, and I actually, oh. this was before it went viral. I took my bullhorn out and I said, 
Hillary, come out and say hello. I know this voice haunts you more than the name Monica Lewinsky. And people were like, you're going to die. And I'm like, no, I'm not. So uh, it was really fun. But um, yeah, I do other things. And the reason why is like, hey, let's go watch this funny guy. But then realize that like the funny stuff that's out there, which I appreciate that everyone loves, is just a way to get people in to start talking about the issues. And um, and so, you know, I, I do this podcast on LFA TV. It's on Rumble. It's called Ungoverned. We're Monday to Friday. Um, and, and we're, we're just, we're bringing people in and, and, and getting the message out there. We have a very loyal audience shares everything and, uh, is always all over. And, you know, it, to me, it's, it, there's more things, it's more important than just, you know, uh, than just doing, doing this shtick and the shtick, I'm happy that it took off and I'm happy that it is, you know, this, this really fun thing. Um, but at the, at, at the end of the day, my goal is always activism, getting people involved and turning all of these likes and these views and these followers. And, you know, if uh, the, the I did the, the mugshot video shortly uh, earlier this week, the Mona Lisa mugshots, it's the Mona Lisa. It's beautiful. Uh, and, and everyone, you know, received it very well. And it's been shared really well across the planet. And I love that. Now, everybody who shares it, I need you to maybe, you know, share the name of your local county GOP chairman and his phone number and and then, you know, make sure that or her phone and make sure that that person's, you know, doing their job or, you know, everybody who clicked the like button or the repost or whatever it is, if you viewed it on any of the platforms that it's out there, I want those views to turn into victories because like without this country, we don't have anything and and and, right, and right, none of it, right. none of it continues. So that's always what's first and foremost to me. And I appreciate everybody who is so excited about how how funny and enjoyable the content is. That's a great like first step. And now just you know take my hand and come with me into the next step, which is getting involved in the community. Anybody right. who can who takes right. a stand right. has the ability to create something. I was a right. virtual nobody. I was selling paint, literally answering scam calls to the paint store as <laughs> Donald Trump, recording them, putting them on online, and they were going viral. But I was selling paint. I would have contractors who were big conservatives walk in and go, Hey, I just saw your video like 10 minutes ago. It's freaking hilarious. <laughs> like it's great. You know, now, you know, I don't do the paint stuff anymore. We have the podcast. I have the website you mentioned, captain deplorable 45.com where my favorite thing to do with that site is, um, we, I record your voicemail. Great. This is uh, Wayne's voicemail. He's a great guy. <laughs> Handsome. Beautiful, if I may say that. And he's very busy. He can't come to the phone. So leave a message. You know, we do all those. It's so I gotta much get fun. that. I gotta get that though. Yeah, man, I, I it's so much fun. Yeah. Um, but like, but like you said, uh, J. Rob, it was it was about it's a for me at the bottom of my heart. It's always about let's save America, right? Let's keep this place and and restore it back to what we know it can be instead of where the left has taken it. And there's a cultural shift happening. A seventh grader just went viral yesterday for telling his teacher no. Okay, right. I mean, mm. folks, it's it's happening, and it's mm -hmm. like uh, I talked about this today. Just harness that energy. And just run with it. And don't worry about what these what the enemy says to you. Right. They don't right. matter. There's more of us than there are of them. And mm -hmm. I and I want that to resonate. Have you noticed? Uh, because you know, we've been talking about it um for the past couple of weeks, but uh have you noticed and, and thank you for speaking to the audience about that? Have you noticed the 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 lack of I don't know will, but the lack of protest? Um since January 6th, because usually there are a lot of people, you, there was a march almost every weekend on DC in the plaza, you know, um, on, on the Hill or whatnot. And, uh, you, you look overseas now and you see protests everywhere, but you don't see any protests here on the ground, uh, in Washington, DC. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think January 6th was, and this is important because this is the reason why I was in Bedminster last Tuesday getting the opportunity. We didn't know that was going to happen, but it was a January 6th fundraiser. Um, and uh, this is this is something that I've been saying a lot on my show. I say to friends all the time, I post about it. If you let them hijack the narrative over January 6th that it was this rowdy insurrection, it was an attempt to overthrow the government, which is funny because, you know, there were no guns. Um, or not, you know, there may have been a, a few, but this wasn't like this armed rebellion. It was literally right, right. a protest. Um, you know, if you let them hijack that narrative, you are essentially letting them shred the First Amendment, your First Amendment rights. And they were doing this in the summer of 2020. There was a, uh, I, I remember, I, I got to find it. It's out there. There was this, some number of health experts signed on to this uh, uh, statement about the uh, the Black Lives Matter protests in 2020, because everyone was sitting there going, hmm, 
uh, you know, what happened to George Floyd and then the protest, is the virus gone, right? And they said, no, the virus isn't gone, but racism is a virus too and you should protest it, but don't protest opening up the country. So I'm sitting there going, this is the, this is, and I, Andrew Cuomo was my governor at that time. This is the smartest virus I've ever seen. It knows the difference between 10, 59 PM and 11 PM. It knows the difference between beer and root beer. It knows that if you're not eating food, you, you can get infected. It knows the difference between six feet and five feet. It knows a lot of different, those times. It knows now what your sign says, who to infect, you know? Right. Um, and it, it was, it was something that we've seen. They've been trying to take away. Uh, they've been trying to demoralize conservatives, people on the right, from protesting for a long time because they know that there are more conservatives, there are more patriots than there are of these liberals, crazy people. They just happen to be louder. And so that's why our movement sprouted up on Long Island and did that was because we were like, no, there are actually more of us who feel this way and we're going to show you. And we were always peaceful. Uh, but But the January 6th thing was a way for the left to basically say, look, they're not actually peaceful and they're so violent and rowdy. They actually tried to overthrow the country. And because of the involvement of fed federal institutions and, and things like that in January 6th, people are afraid of being entrapped now. My thing is you don't have to be afraid of being entrapped. If you feel like you might be entrapped or you can't control yourself, then hey, maybe stay home and touch some grass and read some philosophy and kind of <laughs> ground yourself a little bit. But like right. it, it's really about self-control. I mean, we had groups of 10, 20, 30,000 protesting in New York on Long Island before the 2020 election. And, you know, the SPLC put me on a list and they 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 said we were domestic terrorists. And I had ele elected officials calling me Timothy McVeigh. And we did nothing. I mean, we had Suffolk County police, mm -hmm. Nassau County police saying we've never had an issue with these guys. They're they're probably the best. They clean the park. They make sure they don't leave anything behind. Um, so don't let that intimidate you, because, yeah, there is a lack of protest and organization. Uh, because people are intimidated and they're afraid and fear is the way they control the masses. I mean, I might, one of my favorite right, movies, right, Star Wars, right. you know, Grand Moff Tarkin and the Darth Death Star. Fear will keep the local systems in line. They tell you that's exactly how they always rule. Um, don't be afraid. That's the point. No, you're you're absolutely right. And I'll tell you that almost all of these efforts are designed for people like us to take a knee. Don't take a knee because if we take a knee, they win. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I, I wonder, Sean, if you notice, I'm a little older than you, but <clears throat> I've been watching this stuff for a long time. You look but, great, though. You look great. I uh, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> but I, face for radio. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if you can feel that. I feel a palpable feeling. I, I feel like we're watching the death of the deep state right in front of us. I don't think it's apparent yet to everybody, but, you know, they, they've, they've stopped lying. You know, they've started, they're, they're in their death throes, I think, because they're coming there. They're not even trying to hide it anymore. They're trying to lock up their political opposition to keep themselves from being locked up. Yeah. And they're telling, they're telling us that Trump's doing what they're doing. And I, I just wonder if you, if you feel that, if you feel a difference this time than say two years ago. Definitely. Um, and I think they're actually telling us that they're scared. There's a lot of, yeah. there's a lot of evidence out there that think that they, they actually are telling us right now they don't think they're going to win in 2024. Uh, right. Biden is looking for a long-term Ukraine funding system. And the only reason he's doing that is to make sure that and this is what this is what the article is Daily Caller reported on. It said it. they don't want a future president to cut funding. Well, if they don't want a future president to cut funding, that means they don't think they're going to be the, you know, they don't think they're going to be inaugurated or reelected again. Now, that could mean one of two things. That could mean they think they're going to get primaried or have to resign or that another party, Donald Trump specifically, is going to take control of the White House and end the Ukraine war in 24 hours, as we just joked about before. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you had uh, Dan Goldman, who's a complete clown. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He just, I mean, Worth just it. a completely, just a complete waste of space, you know, and an airhead and, and, you know, what do you want to call him? But um, on August 13th, Gateway Pundit reported this. I talked about this today. Was, you know, that, that he said that uh, the Hunter Biden plea deal wasn't necessarily to get him out of trouble now, but was was to give him immunity against the quote unquote vindictive Trump. Well, how is Trump going to be vindictive? You're indicting him. You're telling me nobody's above the law. Do you not think it's going to work? Do you think he's going to wind up, you know, as the next president of the United States? You know, is that what they're thinking? I think they're telling you that. I think also, like you just mentioned, the deep state is they've come out of hiding. They're telling they're, they're showing their true colors. They're telling people that, no, these aren't your kids. This is the public school systems kids. They're telling people that uh, they will interfere in elections and lock up their political opponents and then point the finger at Trump and said he did it with Russia. Um, you know, they are 
absolutely, uh, they, I feel like they're a, they're a cornered animal right now. And they're showing you every last bit of what they're going to hit you with before you can, you know, rectify the problem. I mean, they're, they're showing you their claws. They're showing you their teeth. They're growling. They're yelling. They're kicking. They're screaming. Uh, we just have to be strong enough to withstand that. And I think we are. And I think, you know, the power that we have, ask Bud Light, ask Disney, ask Target. They see uh, when you mess with us and you push That's us right. to our limits, it's not going to work. That's right. Hey, Sean, That's we're right. coming up on a break, so we're going to have to get you out of here before we cut you loose. Give us a quick uh, shout out. Where where should people follow you? What's next on the agenda? But what what do sure. we do there? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter or X as they call it now at S H A W N underscore F A R A S H. You can visit the website Captain Deplorable Forty Five dot com. I show ungoverned on Rumble. Uh, that's on Rumble dot com slash LFA TV. And uh, and we're just focusing on winning. We're focusing on pushing to twenty twenty four. And hope to see you all there. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, I have in, entirely enjoyed you. Um, and I'm sure that my boys have uh, same thing. We want to have you back. We want to continuously have you back. We love your point of view because you're not just doing this. You have a great um, eye on what's going on. And you are, um, uh, you know, you, you can speak about it in an intellectual way that everybody can understand. So we appreciate that so much. Um, Mr. Trump, you want to lead us out? On break. Well, thank you for joining the Wayne Dupree podcast. It's been a pleasure. It's just two times in one week. You know, it happened earlier. Now it happened again. And uh, it's going to be like how we make America great again. Again, looking forward to coming back. Keep it locked right here. It's a fantastic show. Believe me. <laughs> oh, my God. All Thanks, right. Man. Thank you. Thank it you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Attention, <laughs> Americans. Breaking news. Biden's dangerous plan for a digital dollar is underway. Don't be fooled. It won't benefit you. Take action now. The Federal Reserve phase deployment of FedNow began on July 1st, 2023. Be prepared. This may catch many off guard. Your hard-earned assets are in jeopardy. But there's a simple legal tax loophole to opt out of the digital dollar. Reach out to American Alternative Assets for a free wealth protection guide and discover how to safeguard your wealth with gold and silver IRAs against a failing dollar and volatile markets. Visit protectfrombiden.com. This invaluable guide provides precise steps to transfer your IRA or 401k into precious metals without any tax consequences. Be smart. Don't let Biden force you into using the government government's new digital dollar. Visit protectfrombiden.com to get your free guide and get started. Again, that's protectfrombiden.com. When I invented my pillow, my passion was to help each and every one of you. And 20 years later, all of your support is what keeps us going. Because of you, we've been able to create thousands of USA jobs and help millions get the best sleep ever. To thank you, my employees and I are bringing you a limited edition my pillow. The Giza Elegance My Pillow is made with my patented adjustable fill, the most amazing cotton, and a two-inch pipe cusset. It has four custom loft levels, machine washable and dryable, and you get my 60-day money-back guarantee and 10-year warranty. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your limited edition 20th anniversary MyPillow queen size. Retails for $69.98, now only $19.98. That's right, get a queen size MyPillow for only $19.98. From all of us here at MyPillow, thanks for Welcome back to the Wayne Dupree Podcast, along with Jason Robinson and the godfather of conservative radio, Mr. Hodge Baylor Jr. We're broadcasting on Red Voice Media. That was awesome. That was I wish he would have had a little energy, though. He was kind of toned down. <laughs> <laughs> and what's crazy is I'm trying to work on the graphics and behind the scenes, so I'm, I'm, I'm listening. To him, do that. He sounds more like Trump listening than looking at him. I'm, I'm right. like, God dirty. Donald Trump is back on the show. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. He looks like him too, though. I mean, his his movements and stuff. Yeah, yeah, right. Much, much better than DeSantis. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see what DeSantis? Uh, um, I don't know. There was a uh, you know what's going on in Florida right now, and there's a 
um, tropical hurricane. Um, well, yeah. Um, I don't know if it's been downgraded or whatnot, but um, DeSantis was doing a press conference, and one of the first questions or the last questions was, um, "Excuse me, President Trump, uh, who lives in the state, hasn't said anything uh, about what's going on. What do you think about that?" He's like, "Well, you know, I, you know, I, I don't have, you know, I'm not going to worry about that, that right now. I'm going to do that." So, I was like, "Man, that man, it sounds like a planet question." It's like it that's that's the governor up there. Donald Trump is not the governor. Donald Trump is probably in bed, bed minister right now. He, he, I mean, he's he's taking care of business. So why in the world would you come up with a question like that? That's stupid. That's silly. <laughs> that's silly. You know, when you see the establishment doing this stuff, either the media or you know these operatives, it's just it, it's like you see the marionette strings and you can't unsee it. Hutch says that hey. all the time. Like you just can't unsee it. Because it's a it, it's it's a hard uh, hard thing to handle, man. Once you get it, it's like nothing looks the same anymore, right? You know, it, it's it, the whole narrative is skewed. You know, when you have Fox News come out and say after DeSantis wins the the debate last night, uh, he's closing the gap with Trump. None of that's true. No, no, right? it's not true. No, None no, of it's not true. Well, and we've had a multitude of guests on too. And I, I would, if we had a little more time and next time we have him on, I'm going to ask Sean because Sean, he is a grassroots like m- guy. Like he literally is working on getting people elected to the school boards. He's the type of people we talk about that we need more of young, energetic, funny, but he actually does the work. And everybody we've had on the show understands without President Trump, we have a 0% chance in 2024. I mean, that's just the facts. And them trying to prop up DeSantis or Romney or, you know, whatever, you you know, any of these clouds. I saw a good analogy about that just today, getting ready for today's show. Mm -hmm. The GOP wants 2014 back. Yep. And that's what they, you look at those people on that debate stage. That was 2014. Except for Ramaswamy, they're talking in George W. Bush language and expecting it to work. It's never going to work again, GOP. Never. It's over. Yeah, I tweeted out earlier today. It was like, when I made that vow in 2016, I wasn't playing. I, I mean, and I, I'm serious as a heart attack and two strokes following. I am never, ever, ever voting for an establishment Me uh, candidate ever oh. again. Ever. They've ruined, they've ruined the, the discourse in this country. Yeah. They really have. They've been complicit in the destruction of America. All you people that are up there right now, yeah. with the possible right. exception of about 10%. Well, you know, and, and it's interesting because the country is designed to survive in balance. We have checks and balance in government. We have, you know, you have the right and the left, and one side runs a country for a while, the other side runs a country for a while. But our side quit fighting back at some point in the last 10, 15 years. And without the right pushing back, the left just loses their goddamn mind. And that's what we're living in right now. And it was because the political right said, we make more money when we get close but lose. And frankly, the worse the left makes the country, the better it is for us financially. Because we we drum up more business, in you know campaign donations or or whatnot yeah, i mean yeah. it's they don't want to fix the country the establishment republicans do not want to fix the country i was just looking at something just a few minutes ago i don't know um and i think i think this was a shot at the bow to president trump but it but it but it wasn't for president trump giuliani um uh, was slapped with a fine by the judge uh, in Georgia. A defamation lawsuit. Um, A six-figure fine. Think of that. Let's see. Ordered him to pay. Let's see. Accompanied by his 57-page memorandum opinion, uh, Sanctions for Giuliani's discovery violations, smacking him with a $43,000 fine, plus ordering him to pay $89,000 for plaintiff's attorney fees. That's Um, lawfare right there. That's lawfare. Right. For a total of just under $133,000, a figure which is accruing interest 
since July for the attorney fees in September for the fine. Uh, uh, and the order keeps getting worse for Giuliani, issuing a default judgment against defendant Rudy Giuliani on his liability for plaintiff's defamation, intentional infliction of emotional dis distress, civil conspiracy, and punitive damage claims, meaning that he, that legally he is deemed to have lost the lawsuit. You know, um, this, 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 this right here, uh, President Trump has told you, we've told you, you've heard it from many other podcasters and stuff. They are coming after you. Okay. They are coming after you. Uh, yes. Yes. And the, the, um, you're talking about Amer uh, um, America's mayor. You remember his picture was everywhere. America's mayor, America's mayor. And I thought he was going to be presidential nominee. Yeah. Right. At, at the could, time, he, I really did. He probably could have. He probably could have. He was too and late. Then, and now you have him up on a wanted poster or type of, well, not wanted, but uh, uh, a mugshot. Now you have him on a mugshot, you know, uh, um, and and um, get, um, getting all these legal bills and stuff. He's not going to be able to take care of this. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, wow, this is this is this is real. This this is not this is not playtime. Um, you know, and you know, you know. I got to give a shout out to Hutch too. I always joke that like Hutch says stuff, and I like have my little Hutch list where I write things down and like look into it. And I'm serious about that. But he had talked about after the Bush Gore election, how Democrats increased their spending on lawyers. And if you go track that, it's remarkable how much they have weaponized just the lawyers and law firms. So, And really, you look at just just real quick, you look at uh, what's happening with Donald Trump right now. And I know they would love to convict him, but that's not the ultimate goal. Right. This is lawfare. This is to form public opinion. This yep. is to turn people against Donald Trump using all these made up things, these charges that are all garbage. They're all garbage. We know that. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that. I don't know what yeah. we're going to do if they put him in jail. I, I guarantee you one thing. It's not going to just be nothing. Exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the stage, uh, a friend of mine um, for a while, we used to have him on um, a lot. Yeah. And um, I'm glad I'm glad we're finally able to bring him back. Um, he, he is you know i was saying earlier uh earlier in the week if you want somebody that's in the know or you, you always want to know you you always want to know somebody that is in the know that knows something that they can kind of give you some information here hey you know such and such well <laughs> well don't say anything about yeah yeah <laughs> you you know that's not your real daddy no no i'm kidding i'm kidding but um let me let me bring on uh, Mr. Tony Schaefer. What's up, T? Hey guys, good to be on. Thanks for having me, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Tony Schaefer, he is uh, uh, he's as I said, he's a man who a man with a plan, a man that knows what he is talking about, uh, and we can continue uh, from 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 the other day. Have you from the time that we have spent together? Uh, from the last time that you were on the show, did you ever think this country was going to go or or just sink so fast? The answer is no. I mean, look, um, when I signed up in 1981, enlisted uh, during the, the first Reagan kind of the recovery of the nation, I anticipated that we as a republic would continue to prosper. And it was the 90s, I think, where things under the Clinton administration. And you guys were just talking about lawyers. Look, that's when the Clintons started putting um, operatives into the infrastructure, into, you know, like Lois Lerner, uh, mm -hmm. uh, all these folks, uh, Tory James Newland. Comey, Comey, all the, yeah, all these folks got it kind of working their way through. They, they embedded folks. And of course, uh, they started looking at legal ways to upend uh, the process of of the Republic. And I always get, I get so fed up Wayne, uh, when they call it a, dem a democracy, we don't have a democracy. We are not right. a democracy. Right. Uh, right. Democracy, uh, pure democracy is not a good idea. The majority will overrule the minority. It will, it will, it will uh, create all sorts of havoc. And so we have a Republic that has uh, competing branches that 
uh, will use their power to off, offset the other's power to keep everything balanced. But they don't want that. And at this point, they've invested over the past 20 years using a, a variety of uh, methods to infiltrate every institution from education to uh, the Department of Justice. And that's why people, I think, rightly need to be concerned about uh, what I would call foreign and domestic enemies. Because at this point, uh, we've got a ton of domestic enemies that our founding fathers warned us about. Eisenhower warned us about it. You mm -hmm. go back and listen to his last speech, the, the, the military industrial complex speech. He included also the congressional complex because the military industrial complex uses members of Congress to infiltrate and push their agendas. And that's why uh, McConnell, uh, uh, Leader McConnell, actually made the mistake of admitting that at that $113 billion that, that's going to Ukraine. Well, no, it's not really going to Ukraine. It's going to be spent in Washington to enrich his cronies. And yeah. this is, uh, look, I'm all for winning wars. Uh, but the idea is we should set, uh, set up people to win, not pour money into the most corrupt nation in Europe, which is the, you, it's really amazing to watch how uh, Ukraine went from the most corrupt nation to a, a nation worth investing in. Really? <laughs> Overnight. Overnight. And so I'm not against the people of Ukraine. Right. Uh, I consider Putin a thug. With that said, putting it in perspective, you have two nations who are cut from the same cloth. Both have oligarchs in charge. D Zelensky just recently said he's not going to run elections till we pay for it. Really? What? Are you kidding me? Uh, so we're, we, and the bad leadership that we're experiencing here are helping fund that chaos and nonsense over there. It's, and the, the last insult, Wayne, let me get this out. Mm -hmm. $700 per family to Maui. I, are you kidding yeah, me? I know. I know. I mean, to me, that's that right there is, is shows their true colors. These people are, these are blue people. They're, they're, they're messing up. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the idea that you can't send $10,000 per family to say, look, here's 10,000. It's yeah. expensive. Get get back on your feet. Let's figure out a way to get you forward. Instead, they put in seven hundred dollars a person. At the same time, they put in for four another forty billion for Ukraine. Yeah, it is something. Uh, well, <clears throat> really. I, and um, um, uh, let let me introduce Jason Robinson and Hutch Bailey Jr. Jason, hey guys. Oh, hey Tony. First, let me say it's an honor to finally get to meet you. I've followed you Good for years. You. And uh, and the stuff you do is great. For those who don't know, you have a ton of experience in the Department of Defense and, and in that space, military service. But we look at the show that Donald Trump, the greatest thing he ever did is expose the deep state and the corruption. And when he came down the escalator, everybody's eyes have been open like, oh, my gosh, all this crazy yeah. stuff's happening. Yeah. So as you look at that time frame, like 2016 through today, what's been the most shocking thing that you've seen? that the establishment has done. And I know it's a long list, but I, I just always was curious, like what was that moment where Tony goes, holy shit, this is really bad. Well, I think the Mike Flynn thing was, should have been an eye opener for everybody because they weaponized the DOJ against Mike and then rolled right into the Russia, the, uh, the uh, Russia collusion narrative. And I was actually uh, advising uh, multiple members of the Obama administration rolling into to the Trump administration. And, um, I was in meetings at the Pentagon when some of this stuff started coming up, and I knew for a fact that there was no Russia collusion. It's like, no. And the if you guys recall, and you can Google this, um, when Trump tweeted out in March, I think it was March 4th or 5th, sometime early, the first week of March, when he tweeted out he'd been wiretapped. And everybody went nuts. Oh, he's oh, he does. He's crazy. crazy. It's like no. And I, and I, morning, I think. yeah, I went on Fox <laughs> that morning. As a matter of fact, they sent me a car. Yeah, and like, mm -hmm. and I was in Fox and Friends, and my mm -hmm. friend Ed Henry was hosting. Ed is still around, as you guys know. And yep. I went on, and I said it's absolutely correct, and everybody was shocked. I mean, Ed Henry told me later that they were yelling at him, yelling in his ear, trying to get me to shut up. And I said, <laughs> wow. I said, and I said, yeah, I said, no, this is absolutely correct. By this time, uh, Trump's been uh, given access to all the intelligence collection methods that are available to him in the administration. He's probably going back and looking at what was going on during the transition. And yeah, mm -hmm. he's probably he's probably well aware of the fact that they were trying to spy on his campaign, and uh, that and it was all about Obama doing it. I called it Soviet level wrongdoing. You guys can Google it. The audience can Google it. 
Tony Schaefer, Soviet level wrongdoing. And I, and, and for, for better, or for worse, Fox has left that interview up. And I said, we're going to come to find it's all completely fake. And yep. everybody thought I was nuts. Everybody thought that I was just, you know, trying to support Trump, which I, I fundamentally, I guess I was since I was speaking the truth about what I knew. Right. But it was that point on, I knew something was really wrong. I knew that there was corruption. I mean, look, I'm a whistleblower. I had to do, as a matter of fact, 18 years ago today was the first hearing on something called Able Danger, where we started talking about the fact that the U.S. government had prior knowledge of the 9-11 hijackers. And um, I knew then that things were bad. Uh, I just didn't know they were uh, to the level of bad that we saw over the last four years. And again, Trump, I think, helped open up a lot of people's eyes to how bad it really is. Colonel, uh, my name's Hutch Bailey Jr. Hey, Thanks for coming on the show. Thank um, you. I know it's been a long time since you've been on the program and the culture's changed a little bit. Could you let the audience know your preferred pronouns? Apocalypse <laughs> now. It's on my Twitter. Or X. Thank you. Just wanted to get that out of the way. Uh, I love the smell of napalm in the morning. It's uh, it all goes together. The neatest thing is, is I also enlisted in 1981. That's uh, great. So I, I'm a cold warrior myself. Me I too. just got, yeah. out, got out after 35 years. But uh, you I beat me. Ask, I did 30 and a half. So there you go. I did 33 and a half. I'm not going to lie. I only uh, did eight. I only did eight. So I'm watching the, the debate, the Republican debate the other day. And we spoke yeah. about this earlier before you came on. Uh, and it looked to me, other than Ramaswamy, it looked to me that everybody else wanted it to be 2014 again. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I could never understand how many people, I want to know your thoughts about this too. When, when, when two things came around, when the, when the Russia, Russia, Russia thing came around, I couldn't yeah. believe I told Wayne, I said, there's no way these, this people, the people of America are going to believe that the biggest communist on the planet is backing the biggest capitalist on the planet. Right. That's right. not possible. You know, right. And they, and they fell for it anyway. Mm -hmm. Now, the second, the second thing I wondered if you thought about was this idea that the two Slavic countries, Ukraine and Russia, that Ukraine, just look at the order of battle. There's no way that Ukraine ever stood a chance no. against, against Russia. There's just never, there was never a chance. And people bought it. Our party is supporting this. Uh, mm. What are your thoughts on the whole thing, sir? So on, on the latter issue first, um, Dave Petraeus was on talking about how he's convinced somehow they're going to be able to take uh, Crimea back. It's like, what? I know. <laughs> they haven't breached the first line of defense. And, you Russia know, gave you Crimea. <laughs> yeah, right. I was talking, you know, I was on with Judge Napolitano early talking about this. I said, you know, I said, look, if you want to know how they should have done what they wanted to do, which is breach the Russian lines and at least cause sufficient casualties to bleed the Russians out to make the Russians stop, which they didn't do. I said, talk to Doug McGregor. Doug has done this in the desert. Yeah. You know, they did it very yeah. well. Uh, you know, it's like, so whoever's advising them is advising them badly. And this is the other thing too. And again, I always have to caveat this because I, you know, by the way, just for you all to know, and this is a public statement, I've refused to do any media for either the Russians or Ukraine. I'm always getting calls to do media. It's like, no, until the war is over, I'm not, I'm not even going to give either side any potential to take my words out of context. Right. Uh, and so I refused all those interviews. But with that said, the fact that this administration refuses to accept the fundamental uh, uh, foundation for the Russian grievances has resulted in a completely lopsided uh, uh, concept that, oh, yeah, Ukraine can win. It's like, no, they can't. And they're not. It's all a numbers game at this point. And until we recognize that the Russians, the Russians have the perception that they need uh, a basically a boundary around Russia uh, to protect their their nation. And this is why. Uh, Mongols, 1237, Ottoman Empire, 1570, Sweden, 1708, Fr the French, Napoleon, 1812, Japan, 1905, the U.S. intervention, we did it, 1918, Germany, 1941, a guy named Adolf Hitler, I think you recall mm -hmm. him. Yep. These are all invasions of Russia. So the Russians have a, a fundamental paranoia that you have to manage. The Reagan, I'm a Reagan guy. I, I'm still friends and mentors with a lot of the Reagan guys. Reagan understood that Ma Reagan managed their paranoia. Uh, you must make a friend of paranoia, to quote uh, uh, Colonel Kurtz in a 
a very obtuse way regarding how you manage the, the Russian perception of reality. And you have to manage their perception. So the fact that you keep having people like Petraeus, Victoria Newland, uh, uh, um, Tony Blinken, Mm -hmm. all live in this mm -hmm. alternate universe somehow, mm -hmm. you know, saying, oh, no, we're, our policy is Ukraine will win. <laughs> OK, <laughs> but it's not going to happen. <laughs> and, and I think that's what makes this thing such a travesty. And I, I feel the pain and I feel sorry for the people of Ukraine who are caught in the middle of this 21st century woke goes to war episode that, that the Biden administration is trying to drive. Well, um, some, something that we have been talking about ever since this whole thing started was where, like, uh, you remember when the Russian tanks were lined outside and they weren't moving there anywhere and CNN said, they all ran out of gas. It's all <laughs> over. I mean, um, the Russian army is about a week from surrendering yeah. and, you know, they're, uh, Putin is dying of a cancer and he doesn't have that long. And it's like uh, 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 with with all the money that, what, $140, $150 billion and I always thought that Americans wanted a return on investment. They're not going to get any return on investment with this um, at all. Uh, what's your what's your um, view on that? Well, I think that Biden is compromised. And I think anything that Biden can do to push our needed uh, military resources to Ukraine and then not replace them. Think about this. Biden has uh, sold uh, all of our strategic oil reserves to China. He's doing things right now that would degrade our ability to fight an actual fight in the Pacific if we needed to do something. Uh, we have raided all of our wartime global stocks to support Ukraine. This is Biden's admitted to this. I think the Pentagon's alluded to it. And the issue is, to me, why is Biden making such horrific dis dis uh, choices, which will, again, not as you're to your point, not return any 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 return on our investment. And um Say Ukraine wins, then what? What are we going to do? One of the most dangerous courses of action. Say, say for example, this gentleman. Let's set aside the reality. Let's let's pretend. Let's pretend that Jake Sullivan and um, mm -hmm. Victoria Newland are correct. That somehow, by some miracle, within the next two weeks, uh, Ukraine is going to take over Crimea and they're going to basically crash uh, Putin's government. That Putin's going to go into exile. And it's going to be chaos. Do we really want? a nation the size of Russia uh, with no clear leadership to leave it ungoverned with nuclear weapons. Is that a really wise idea? What if, you know, is, is that something we really want? Because we did this with Libya and yes, we're still yeah. suffering the consequences with Libya. Yeah. We did this yeah. with Syria and we saw what happened with ISIS. So no. are you guys thinking this through? We, we literally have the high school debating team who can barely play checkers trying to play uh, a master's level chess and they ain't doing well. Right. Well, and it's it, we talked about it yesterday too. The people behind Putin that would take over are even crazier. So we're in even worse Bingo. shape. Bingo! Bingo! Right? <laughs> now, now, question for you, Tony. Let's say President Trump wins. Your phone rings, and he says, "Tony, my Department of Defense is screwed up. I need you to fix it." <laughs> and what are you going to come in and do? What are your next steps? Because we've talked about we know yeah. it's we broken. got connections. We can hook yeah. you up. Well. Yeah, exactly. First off, if that call comes, it's like, you need to let me be in charge. I don't want second guessing. I don't, you know, when Mattis came in, Mattis tried to bring in, this is, this is fairly documented. He tried to bring in a bunch of Clintonistas. He wanted to bring in uh, several folks who were, were part of uh, Beacon Global, which was the holding tank, think tank holding for the Clinton folks who are supposed to go in with Clinton. So it's kind of like, really? And there was huge battles. So first, the first mm -hmm. thing is like, no, I, if you, if you make, if I'm in charge, I'm in charge. I don't want any battles. I don't want the White House second guessing me. I'm in charge, 100%. Second, I go to my Reagan bench. There's a bunch of folks from the Reagan administration who were ready to go in under Trump, and a guy named Rance Priebus prevented it. And yeah. we were going to bring in the Reagan folks. As a matter of fact, Dr. Chris Lehman, uh, who was Ronald Reagan's uh, nuclear weapons advisor, uh, brother of John Lehman, we we had nominated him to be the guy that 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 hires and fires. And you all know this. Personnel is policy. Those people you pick as your initial team sets the complete agenda for the future. Right. Trump made the mistake of believing that the government was like a business. It's like you, you come in, you're the CEO and people pay attention. It's like, no, <laughs> it doesn't work. So so I get I get full full primacy. I don't get second guessed. Uh, I get to bring in my team, which are Reagan guys. You would know a lot of the names. What's left 
And then if not the Reagan guys, people, the Reagan guys pick. And these folks would be completely focused on trying to recreate the magic of what the Reagan uh, administration did, where they set up a, a, a strategy to defeat the Soviet Union. We're not going to I'm not going after the Soviet Union this time. It would be China this time. We would, would set up a, a, a Pentagon that's focused on uh, reclaiming uh, a, a, an ability to affect and protect the equities of the United States globally. Not to be a bully, but to define these are the things we're going to protect. And you pick people who understand that mission that objective and you put them in place and this would take about three months and then in the process of, of doing the initial hiring i would fire the first three levels of leadership and i would do mm -hmm. that in ways which i can't talk about here because i figure it out but i i'm telling you you can move people out without firing them you can get people out of the way john layman told me how to do it by the way a little little trick i if you all look at what john says you may figure out what what i would do but i'm just saying that you would have to move a bunch of people out and i would do it and i would do it with impunity i just don't care uh, and we got to get I, you in there, man. It's not like it's not like I'm looking to be popular, you know. It's like I. Right. It's not that I don't care, but I don't care. And then <laughs> I would I would have several deputies uh, like minded, and I know who they are, and I would bring them in, and we would we would go to town, and you would see things turned around in six months. It, it, fundamentally, it would take time to get it focused below the first three levels, but it would take uh, over the that first year. It would be it would be tough. You'd have all sorts of attacks against me personally. Uh, I would be constantly, uh, you know, any little thing I ever said here or any other program would be amplified. It's like, you know, whatever. I, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a retired spy. I did spy type things. Did I like women? Yes, I did. Thank you. Uh, so, <laughs> yes, yes, I did. And and did I did I did I do things in combat that I you know giving full body massages to female sergeants in combat? Well, you know I think the Pentagon tends to frown on that. It, it, it is what it is. So what can I say? But I, oh, but I'm man. just telling you that 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 would be the course of action that I would I would take if I were asked to to, to, to do something. So love it. Uh, all right, so I got a little confused as the order there, but I'll uh, pick this up real quick. Uh, I, you could do it real easily, Colonel. You just you need about a battalion of MPs though that are on your side. And then you bring them all in a room. You put the letters all in front of your letters there, and they open the envelope, and there's a resignation letter. You can either fight <laughs> it or not, you know. But anyway, I, I really uh, hope that somebody does that because one of the things that really soured me uh, was the uh, behavior of four-star General M Mark Milley. I mean, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, I always thought. From being a private E1 to being the most senior warrant officer in the battalion, in the, in the group, that the military would always come in in favor of the Constitution. And to watch yeah. that is the single worst thing that I've ever seen. And that includes Iraq, Afghanistan, and everything else. Millie's action was so much worse than any of that. What can we do to root that out? That. I mean that's that's well, not firing. That that's that has to be no. Worse. Millie Millie is a product of of. Uh the progressive policies that have ruled hiring and promotions within DOD. Think about this for a second. Uh, how many victories have we had over the past 20 years? Zero. Right. And how many promotions have we had during that time? Ungodly numbers. Ungodly. And so we have, we have set up a system where you, me, any officer is measured by measures of performance, not measures of effectiveness. You can create performance standards which are completely detached from the reality which we live in. Things like, uh, did you wear high heels on uh, Gay and Lesbian Recognition Day? You didn't. Well, geez, we're going to have to mark you down because you don't understand diversity. I'm serious. I'm completely serious here. You're not going along with the program, so we're going to mark you down. And people aren't aren't uh, rated and complimented based on their ability to achieve specific military missions. The DOD's mission is to kill people and break things. That's it. That's what it's designed to do. It's what it does very well. Does it do some other things peripherally, like do aid and and uh, build things back? Yeah, we can. Uh, it's something that we do, but it's not our primary mission. And when you take that away as our primary focus and you start making it into a social Petri dish, Mark Milley's rise to the top. And uh, who doesn't want to see Mark Milley parading around in a skirt and high heels? I know I do. I'm looking forward to that when he retires. So. <laughs> but... Uh, but with that said, that's why we have the problem we do. We have leadership who are not committed to the primary uh, mission uh, of protecting the American people and, and protecting the Constitution. So, Well, look, you, man comes with 
intellectual information breakdown and he delivered man I, um man i love you man i mean that, that well it's that, great to join you guys i love talking about this stuff you know? <laughs> All right. it's fun it's oh fun. my god okay well here's the deal welcome back and uh we look uh, we look to bring you on again and keep you keep you uh real close on our uh, um on our list because you are a treasure oh, thank uh, you. believe that believe that thanks you, wayne you you are a treasure how well, can you re- how can we so uh, yeah so londoncenter.org uh, or projectsentinel.com and it, we have our uh, pro- thought to action a youtube page where we do stuff as a matter of fact i'm going to do a taping right now of my my radio show on america out loud network it's called uh, the hard truth uh, not the soft truth, the hard truth. We're not we're not a Biden uh, friendly station. Just saying. So, but <laughs> well. So anyway, but check us out there, and uh, we'll I'll look forward to being back with you on you guys real good, real soon. Sorry, take care. Uh-huh. Right. Thanks, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a break. It's Tony Schaefer. Check him out on social media. We're here on the Red Voice Media Network. God bless. We'll be right back. Attention, Americans! Breaking news: Biden's dangerous plan for a digital dollar is underway. Don't be fooled. It won't benefit you. Take action now. The Federal Reserve phase deployment of FedNow began on July 1st, 2023. Be prepared. This may catch many off guard. Your hard-earned assets are in jeopardy. But there's a simple legal tax loophole to opt out of the digital dollar. Reach out to American Alternative Assets for a free wealth protection guide and discover how to safeguard your wealth with gold and silver IRAs against a failing dollar and volatile markets. Visit protectfrombiden.com. This invaluable guide provides precise steps to transfer your IRA or 401k into precious metals without any tax consequences. Be smart. Don't let Biden force you into using the government's new digital dollar. Visit protectfrombiden.com to get your free guide and get started. Again, that's protectfrombiden.com. When I invented my pillow, my passion was to help each and every one of you. And 20 years later, all of your support is what keeps us going. Because of you, we've been able to create thousands of USA jobs and help millions get the best sleep ever. To thank you, my employees and I are bringing you a limited edition my pillow. The Giza Elegance My Pillow is made with my patented adjustable fill, the most amazing cotton, and a two-inch pipe gusset. It has four custom loft levels, machine washable and dryable, and you get my 60-day money-back guarantee and 10-year warranty. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your limited edition 20th anniversary MyPillow queen size. Retails for $69.98, now only $19.98. That's right, get a queen size MyPillow for only $19.98. From all of us here at MyPillow, thanks America! Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Hutch Bailey Jr., Jason Robinson, and my myself, Wayne Dupree, here on the Wayne Dupree Podcast broadcasting on redvoicemedia.com look um i was thinking while uh, tony was talking i was like man we've been having some good interviews man we've been having I, some good I felt kind of bad i felt kind of bad when he said i refused all interviews talking about ukraine i was like oh damn i just talked about ukraine <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I was just reflecting with the wife, like the last two, three weeks. I mean, President Trump, obviously, but I mean, Schaefer and Liz Harrington. And it's just it's uh, it's awesome. And I hope our viewers really appreciate those folks and supporting the show helps us bring those folks on. And tomorrow, Colonel Rob Manis will be on the show. Oh, I love Rob. He'll be he'll be joining us along with Roy Gro of the uh, new federal state of China. That's old. Uh, yeah. So, wow. Okay. So basically, um, a lot of the, a lot of the people that have come on and we haven't talked to them behind the scenes. I, I just asked for the interviews, but if you notice, they're telling you what we've been telling you for the last year. I was like spooky. (laughs) You know what time it is. Get them all in the room. Yep. Get them in a room. Get some guys with guns. Yep. 
I was going to say that was that was what I was dying to ask him that question because that's the Hutch Bailey Jr. plan. Maybe exactly. Hutch Bailey yep. Jr. should be yep. in charge of that when President Trump. Yeah, was. hey, yeah, there you go. Uh, if I do, I'll be wearing civilian clothes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you look at the disservice that they've they've uh, done against their nation. Right. You know, you you look at an officer's basic basic existence. It starts with an oath of office. I mean, at the very first day, you have an oath of office. You swear to God that you are going to defend the Constitution. And then to openly and blatantly not do it on camera in an election year after J6? I mean, you've got to be kidding me. Well, and Tony hit, I mean, he said two things that really struck me that I think get lost in the conversation. The first is, is that our military and Department of Defense, they kill people and they break stuff start stop and uh, and then the second thing where he said that the like every mission we take in that endeavor needs to be here's the goal here's the start point here's the stop point and this is what winning looks like and we've lost all that in our military it's crazy we, we've even lost more than that because there's a step before one bullet gets fired and that's congress declares war right that's one thing that i'm going to guess that i would disagree with tony about I, I, I think that we have to get back to that because right now we have a dysfunctional Congress when it comes to war. When it comes to killing people, these people walk around like they have nothing to do with it. They blame it yep. all on George W. Bush. They blame it all on Obama. No, the whole government has to be in on it or we don't do it. That's yep. number one. And the other thing is the military, especially the higher rank you are, pride, prided itself and that we have a lot tougher rules for us than there are for citizens. And to let people get away with these guys, look at the parade of generals that basically undermine their commander-in-chief, starting with Mattis and McMaster and all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, we got to get we got to get that back. We have to get a disciplined officer corps back. The non-commissioned officer corps will follow. <laughs> We briefly talked about the, the situation in Florida. Uh, so uh, a video just popped across my news uh, desk. I'm getting ready to play it because Democrats are now saying that they want to tie um, funding for Ukraine to FEMA for you Senator Florida. Scott is demanding an immediate vote, as you know, on disaster aid in the Senate uh, next week. He says, quote, Biden and politicians in Washington have been playing games with FEMA's disaster relief fund and insisting that this critical domestic aid be tied aid for Ukraine to foreign aid for Ukraine. We demand that Congress does what's right for American families, starting with ensuring our federal government has all the resources it needs to show up after disasters now and in the future. You know, mm, 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 uh, mm. I'm going to say something unpopular here. Mm, mm. Um, we've, we've become a country that is beholden to aid from the federal government. Yep. You know what I mean? This is unnecessary. What, what, what should happen? There's a story, and you'll have to look it up, back with Calvin Coolidge in the 20s where they, had a, where they had a big drought, a big dust bowl, and everybody was clamoring for money for the people, the farmers, and the president says, no, that's not what we do in this republic. It's not Washington's responsibility. It's the people that live there and near there's responsibility. And Florida has the... I, and look, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that we shouldn't give aid. I mean, that's where we are today. It's where we are. But we should be able to support ourselves. There's 25,000 linemen going to Florida right now, or they're probably already there. That has nothing to do with the federal government. That's right. the power companies. Right. Because where I had my cabin was on a state road on the way to New York, and they had big storms, and there was nothing but linemen trucks driving north to get to Florida, to get to New York. The same thing happens in Florida. I think FEMA is just a freaking dark hole where money goes. I was oh, going to say, I think, I think Hutch touches on a good point. We've, we've reached this point as a society where the first answer for everybody is what's the federal government going to do to help me for yeah. any issue, any disaster, poverty, anything. It's all we need. To, no, whatever happened to Americans, just go fix it. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. And 
The second thing, though, that Governor Scott really points out that's powerful to understand, this is how Washington works. Like, you have one thing we can all agree on. Let's get some money to Florida. Let's spend some money and get it going. But then they tack on 12 different bullshit things that nobody wants to do to right. pass that. And, right. and that's that's where things go off the rails. You, you know, know that's, um, that's something that I noticed a couple of years ago when um, – when a couple of things were happening to conservatives online and a couple of years before that, you would see conservatives say Democrats want everything from the government. They want the government to come in and take care of this and fix that and fix that. And then a couple of years later, I start seeing conservatives do the same thing, begging the government to do this and do that and do that. And I'm like, they, they just switch just, just yep. like that. I'll tell I mean, you another, it's, it's weird seeing that. Another phenomenon to watch is the Democrats know how to get the, the Republican senators to vote on whatever they want. They yep. just added they just added mil, military spending bill in it, and the right. GOP will vote for it no matter what else is in it. I agree. I agree with that. Yeah. That's funny because even if you look in Trump's first term, as much as we love President Trump, he was getting all sorts of stuff on his desk that were approved by the House and Senate where it's like, here's this one thing you want. And we're going to slap on 12 other things that we don't want. And that's where the Republicans need to stand up and go, no, 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 let's just vote on this one thing. Well, that's but where they didn't have the balls to do it, you know. But that's where Paul Ryan ran to the White House. He, he ran to the White point. House because President Trump said he wasn't going to sign that second omnibus bill. He's yeah, like, I, what another was all about the military. The military, yep. remember? He, he said, please, please, uh, this is for the military. And if you sign it, then we will do something for the border wall. But this is for the military. We have to do this for the military. And just remember, and, for the military means for the Republican congressman. Right. Right. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're they're buying more stuff from military contractors who then give that money to the Republican totally Congress seems. people. Yep. And I got to say, too, all this talk about, oh, let's spend money, spend money, spend money, spend money, spend money. Folks were thirty-seven and a half trillion dollars in debt. <laughs> Thirty, like if you think of that in your own person, we have our debt is one hundred and twenty percent of GDP. So let's say you make a hundred thousand dollars a year, and that's great money, and right, and and but you owe one hundred and thirty thousand dollars on your credit card. So even though you make a hundred thousand dollars a year, you owe one hundred and thirty thousand dollars on your credit card, and you're out there talking about, I need to go buy a boat. Can I buy a boat? I'm gonna redo. I'm gonna get a room redone. It's it's beyond ludicrous. It, it certainly is. I mean, they want to spend money and spend money and spend money. Let me translate that. I got to do this every six months or so. Uh, what Jason said, uh, we are thirty seven thousand billion dollars in debt. Yes. <laughs> when we pay back $37,000 billion, when we finally pay that loan off, we are broke. Right. We're, broke. <laughs> We're not uh, even broke. <laughs> Being broke every, would be wonderful. Every citizen share is like up to 97000 and every taxpayer share wow. is up to like $260,000. And they throw wow. these fake words in like trillion just to throw you off. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know what um you know how you know how you watch those movies and you know you got those crooks yeah um we just take uh three quarters of a uh, of a penny right. and uh, well that's like three quarters of a million dollars now it, I mean it's like you won't miss it <laughs> you won't miss it that's that's how they're stealing you know it's taking a million, million dollars get out of the room I, well and it's <laughs> funny because like. Like I've had dudes I worked with that made pretty good livings and like I see their house and I see my house and we made about the same and I see their cars and their boat and all that. And I'm like, I'm like, this is not going to end well for them. And then sure enough, mm -hmm. like four or five years later, like dudes driving up in a Fiat and he's now got an <laughs> ex-wife at a two bedroom apartment. And he's like, oh, I had to declare bankruptcy. I'm like, no way. Really? <laughs> Okay, I used to right. like it back back before credit cards and debit cards were so popular when I was in the army. Yeah. Uh, and you used to write a lot of checks back in the day. I remember that. I remember and a that. lot of a lot of young soldiers and their wives 
weren't real uh, familiar with checkbooks and things like that. Ir irris I, I, financial irresponsibility. Yeah, I mean, and, and they just didn't know. And the, the lady's like, uh, your check bounced. What do you mean? I got like 75 more checks. Right. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. yep. And they would they would embarrass you too. They would stamp your ID card. Yeah. All right. They'd stamp yeah. your ID card. You're not allowed to cash checks on base. Shoot. I remember I remember we were told that in basic training is that the guy got his first checkbook, had never been anywhere. Uh young dude, he got his first checkbook. He <laughs> he went bought all types of stuff. Uh they arrested him too. He didn't, you know, he really didn't understand. We he was like, he said, as as long as I, I thought I had money as long as I had checks. Right. That's basically what he said. As I, I thought I had money. And then we had a senior master sergeant. Do you remember? I don't know whether this happened to you. Uh, we got to a point where everybody got an American Express card. Um, for travel. Yeah, for travel. We but, didn't have American yeah. Express, but we had travel cards. Yeah. We couldn't use it. Right. But you could only use it for travel, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Best thing since sliced bread if you treated it right. They told us, like, if you treated it right, okay? But it's not for leisure. No. Stupid senior master sergeant that had been in for a, a good 18, 19 years. Son of, a, son of a biscuit went down and got him a, 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 a all fully loaded BMW or something like that. Oh. And they had, they had real high credit limits. Yeah, oh, real yeah. high. Yes. Like twenty, put forty thousand dollars. Yeah. Put it on the American Express card. They busted him down to an airman. They sorry, they busted uh, that senior master sergeant down to an airman. He's like, you should have known better than this. Mm -hmm. You know what kind of idiot thinks they can do that? There's two things don't you know. don't do in the military. I saw the same thing happen to an E7. There's two two things you don't do. You don't falsify your travel, and you don't mess with the credit card. Those two things will get you locked up no matter what party you're in. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they were good because before that, I had one of them chump change credit cards. It had like twelve hundred dollar limit or something, and I was up to about nine fifty, something like that thousand dollars. So I had to pick those those raggedy motels. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah, like that, 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 the the with that Indian smell in them. Yeah, this smell smelly was. Yeah. Oh, look the walls. The walls Those didn't have. Um, the walls didn't have sheetrock. It was brick. <laughs> 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 bugs crawling across the floor. <laughs> the carpet was matted down for like 20, 30 years. This is like. Oh, yeah, you got an imprint of an iron on the carpet. <laughs> Quality, quality lodgings, boys. <laughs> I remember that. All right. Went to sleep, went to sleep in one of those one night, and um, I, I was feeling bad. I took a Sudafed. <laughs> no, no, no. I took a, I took a Sudafed, and you know what Sudafed does? Sudafed dries up your nose. Dries your nose. Yep. Well, I, I mean, I happened to, I happened to turn on the heat in the room. <laughs> I woke up like two in the morning. <laughs> It all dried out. <laughs> Don't it all dried water. out. I couldn't. I, I, I look. I was. I had to run get water and splash the water up my nose and everything. Uh, it all dried out. But oh well. That those are the tales in the military. Um. We uh. Let's see. Let's let's um. Did I did I play that? Did I play that? Yeah, I did. No, I got I got another one real quick. Um. President Trump. Let's see. Was oh, that the one he just uh, dropped last night? No, he, uh, it, it looked like he just dropped one just an hour ago. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Hold on. Let me make sure. Um, what are y'all seeing out there right now? While I check, I out. saw a, a, a nice win. The District of Columbia settled a lawsuit, class action lawsuit filed by six gun owners who were arrested in our nation's capital for violating gun control laws that have since been struck down by the courts, agreeing to pay millions of dollars to the plaintiffs and their attorneys for infringing on their Second Amendment rights. I hope that gets too expensive for these people to keep doing. You'd think. You know, it's 
interesting uh two things i saw that i would encourage people to say uh tucker carlson interviewed uh victor orban like great interview only about 30 minutes and and he gives one of the more sobering reminders and i mean he's from that part of the world so he understands more than anybody is about what's happening in Russia, Ukraine, that sort of thing. So I'd encourage that. The other thing, though, is be ready. Come Thursday, Friday, we're about to have something big drop. And the reason so? is, well, here's the reason. This Biden corruption stuff, like his fake emails, you have the the prosecutor they wanted fire is coming out and it's starting to get shared on like Twitter, that kind of thing. And the mainstream media is starting to have to address it. I mean, right now they've got him. National Archives is getting them whatever it is, 5,000 emails that he used from pseudonyms as vice presidents. There's emails back and forth with Hunter Biden and his team where they're specifically saying, we want to know exactly who you're going to talk to. And and they're claiming in video interviews that like, yeah, we talked to Joe Biden. And so anytime that happens, be ready for something else to drop. So I'm going to call it like Thursday, Friday, because otherwise, if they don't change it going into the weekend, all these news programs are going to have to talk about it. So they need something to steal the the headline cycle. Oh, oh you see the green. Oh no, um, no that. Uh, no, I no, I can't. Um, I'm not. Yep. I'm not finding it. I'm not the other finding thing it. That's happening is the thing in Michigan starting to unravel. That whole Michigan Muskegon County thing. There, there's like hard evidence. Uh, there, there's like uh, the police went to people's houses on the, the unregistered voters and there no arrests. I mean, this is getting interesting. I, I never thought, I thought it would be done by now. I thought, you know, Americans get tired of stuff so quickly. They're going to, we're just going to suck this election theft off like nothing happened and they're going to do it to us again. But there was people that persisted in some of these States. Even yeah. Carrie Lake, like she's still going. People are yeah. like, she's crazy. Yeah. She's like, no, they stole my election. She's going to trial gonna... now too. They, they, right. she, got a, she got a win the other day. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Donald Trump uh, y- yesterday said that uh, that he likes Vivek or could see Vivek as a VP uh, as a VP as his VP um, was it? Glenn Beck had something to say about ask that. question uh, you said that you weren't uh, you weren't going but you would be watching the uh, the debate for a vice president have you thought of Vice President Ramaswamy? Well, I think he's great. Look, anybody that said I'm the best uh, president in a generation, I don't know you'll have to define generation, <laughs> but it's a long time. And uh, he said it a couple of times, and he said it in 100 years. So I, I have to like a guy like that. You know, I can't get up, upset with him, but he's a smart guy. Uh, he's a young guy. Uh, he's got a lot of talent. He's a very, very, uh, a very intelligent person. He's got good energy, and he he could be in some form of something. I tell you, I think he'd be very good. I think mm. he's very good. I think he's really just. Our set looked a whole lot better than Glenn Beck's, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Beck runs off a teleprompter now. <laughs> I know. I, I saw that. Um, go like this. Mm, he got I think what he probably did, he probably had like 20 questions, and he was scrolling through them to see which one. But he had to because we were. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Oh. Okay. Uh, we got to get ready to go. Um, tomorrow is our Friday or Thursday. We broadcast Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Well, why don't we do a Friday? Because we want y'all, you got to take a day off. You got to pull yourself together. Politics should not, po- politics should be at water's edge. I don't know if y'all heard that one before. Don't live it. Okay. I, 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 I know we're in trouble. I know our country's in trouble, but you can't burn yourself out because if you burn yourself out, <clears throat> who's going to be there to fight? So, you know, you got to pull yourself You're right. And, and who's who, who's on the left? Tucker Carlson said this really well the other day. The people on the left live by themselves. They don't have children. They don't have families. Mm-hmm. They live in little, little apartment buildings in big cities and they work for, <laughs> they work for big bureaucracies they're empty people. Don't be them. Fellowship. Go talk to people. Go touch the grass. Barbecue, mm-hmm. take a bike ride. Play with your dog, you know, play with your yeah. kids, grandkids. 
I see your Oscar back there, Jason. Oh, this actually isn't an Oscar. <laughs> this was the Donald Trump golden statue of Donald okay. Trump giving the thumbs up. We had uh, back in the day in the first <laughs> run, we, we had helped market the product. So they sent me one. <laughs> I love it. And what, what'd you get? <laughs> oh, giddy up. <laughs> Fake news, fake news. All right, Jason, give me a final thought. Uh, final thought I'll have, folks. Buckle up. Uh, Sir Isaac Newton said, "For every reaction, there's an equal, or every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction." The left and the establishment have gone too far. Regular Americans are going to rise up and take back the country. Um, just be ready. I think uh, you're right. I think you're absolutely right about that. Uh, just to keep you on your toes. There's a CBS report out there that says Donald Trump is considering not showing up for his Georgia arraignment. So I saw that, that. That could get interesting. It Giddy said that um, it said that, that that he really doesn't have to, right? Um, but uh, but the but the lawyers are trying to work it out so that he doesn't have to. So, but the way that the headline looked, there's like, oh, it was yeah, he's trying to skip that thing, you know? It, it's like, it wait a minute, hold on, y'all. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Okay. Uh, Red Voice Media.